So when I'm combining uh, several faces, body parts, whatever, from uh, two or more images, uh, I need to make that selection first. Um, I've technically got three different images here. Um, so we basically got a, uh, I've just highlighted them in different colors for you so you can kind of see the, diff the difference. So I've got um, an image where basically uh, the, fam uh, the family is going to be looking at me. There's going to be an image where the family are looking at each other except for dad, he's looking at me. And then basically I've got dad stood up and kind of the grandma sat down with it. Okay, so um, those are the kind of the different images that I've got. I've kind of put them into color molds to begin with, but realistically when I'm doing the edit, I'll identify that with big families, I'm probably going to need to keep more initially to process through because I'm going to need to steal faces, arms, body shapes, whatever it will be and things. Okay, so um, that's technically what I've done here. So in that case, they would be include included in the actual overall uh, num numbering as such really so if I just kind of batch rename again 101 oops 101 and uh, I've got my numbers through here now this isn't the only kind of part of of this shoot you'll catch another film uh, to kind of see the difference uh, we've got a whole host of kind of different shots with this family and things ready Anyway, let's go back into what we're here to do today is look at how we kind of hot swap um, files. Now, the first thing I try and do, why I kind of keep them, uh, the kind of the secondary images um, in, in with the initial process, but just identify them with kind of a color code so I know actually which ones are being used for just kind of faces, whatever. The reason I'm doing it is not to crop them or anything else. What I want to do is actually apply the same um, basic color adjustment and contrast adjustment to them all. I will then just go through kind of one at a time and basically see if I need to um, add the adjust adjustment brush. You can see there's a woman here with a baby on the right hand side. She just needs to be brightened just a little bit in case she's going to be used. So just uh, swipe across her face, that's all, and just kind of increase that. So now across each one of these, I will go in and basically add that adjustment to her face if she's looking at camera at any stage. Okay, I find it quicker to do that than anything else now. Uh, we can see mum here has got her eyes closed. Um, so I'm definitely going to need this one from here. So if I adjusted this image, I've got to be aware that it's going to be probably used uh, kind of uh, along the way as well. I could go in and crop here, um, but because they're all so different anyway, it's, it, it's, po it's pointless. Um, if I was going to crop anything, it would be just the ones with all the kind of the flats. The flats are being used to stop all the kind of the flare coming through in studio with it. So once these are basically done, um, I might have gone in and added a curve. Um, if so, though, it would be a curve across the whole group, any contrast across the whole group. Um, obviously, anything gen a generalization in exposure would tend to actually be done um, as a whole okay so um, I need to make sure that I'm not just giving one a special treatment unless I've screwed I've screwed it up and more often than not then it's just going to be deleted so I need to just uh, basically delete these let me just go into the family I'm just going to call call this far family um, JFR JPEG from raw and we'll just process those into there. Um, I've already applied the metadata to them and things really. Uh, if you're running a, a, a kind of a, a recent PC, Mac, you're probably going to find that these are going to take uh, anything from half a second to about a second to process each image. Um, otherwise, you know, obviously the older the processor, longer it's going to take. So um, with that done, I can jump straight into the fab, the family JFR and just go and look at these uh, images. So which is going to be the main one? So I've got three images here. Everybody's pretty good except for mum in the middle, this woman here, baby here, 
um, but look I've got less to adjust on this image I've only got probably an expo expression of this guy here and this little girl over on mum's hip so in fact um, is this the best one In fact, this is the best image to use as the base because all I've got to do now, I've just five-starred that up one, and all I've got to do is kind of lift this little image here of this one. Okay, this girl is what I need. So uh, we know the five stars what I want, and we know it's this, it's this one as well. If I want, I want to, I can downrate this, this one now, so I know it's not being used in the mix. Let's just take these two into Photoshop. And the first thing that I want to do is basically fix this little girl. That's the main thing, yeah? Um, so we know she's here already, yep. Yeah? So I'm going to go and steal her. And now I'm going to steal more of um, uh, the picture than I physically need, all right? The common denominator probably is mum's hip here. So I'm going to actually just uh, go in there and make a selection from this hip. Yep, so if I just click onto the clone stamp tool, shrink my brush down. I don't mind it being big, but obviously there's a difference between big and stupid and stupid. Click into that hip and the bottom of the child, then go in into the other image. Now there might be a slight difference in size. We'll worry about that now in a minute. Okay. First things first, create a new layer. And now I'm gonna go in and basically go and just add in that hip there we go so I might not need any of this in a minute okay but I am going to apply the the kind of the basic cropping that we've got here now it, it you might think in fact that uh, there's a little bit of a difference in size and everything else. If there was a big difference in size, you really do want to go in and basically um, kind of resize before you're copying across and things really. Um, as I said, I'm going to just go ahead and basically copy all this part in a minute, including the foot, mum's arm for a minute, Stay away from the other person if possible. Because the mum has got quite a consistent uh, expression on her the whole, the whole time. So we can see already, in fact, that there is a slight difference in sizing. Um, in the mum anyway. Okay, so that would be a slight change in the zoom of the lens or she shuffled forward just a little bit more um, the main thing as i said we've got pretty much all of what we need here to kind of start uh, to start what's going now you could say what the hell have you done all that that for when you only need the baby uh, the baby's face and kind of head and bod and body and so on well I, I agree with you. I could just go in and basically just do that child, but I found more often than not, um, I kind of start doing something and then basically I've realized there's either not enough body or there's not enough face or whatever it'll be and things really. So I'm just going through and showing you the real way that I work. I'm going to control J now to duplicate that one and switch the other layer off. At this stage, I'm just going to go down now and actually change the actual opacity. So now we can start to see realistically if there is a change in size all right um, so the opacity changes on the layer and all I've got to do is really try and see how much of a difference there is in mum's size um, as far as she as I said is the most consistent thing because the baby's moving all over all over the place and if I just grab the core at uh, the corners here pretty much If we look at the eyes, we're pretty much kind of, we've got it bang on, yeah? So, let's do that. So, at that point, double click it, and then we can make that bigger. So, this is scaled, as far as this uh, image is concerned. As far as the shoulder here, uh, remember that basically um, I kind of had a big brush. I've just done B, D and X for brush default. 
I want to make sure that the caps lock is off and the uh, brush is going to be big enough or small enough to do the image. Let me just go into brush. Size, just bring it all the way down here. Here we go. And now I just want to actually make sure I kind of bring that girl's sleeve back. I think um, the the kind of the natural way we've brought uh, we brought them together is better in it in any way. But you can see we've got some other things to actually get rid of. So just kind of get rid of that. That's fine. Get rid of mum's bum. Bring up that extra size as far as into the butt is concerned here. Let's go X to put white on top again. See where this baby's bum is going to do that effect. It's going to just undo what I just did. Because uh, so, I've just slimmed out that butt while I'm doing it anyway. Okay, X again. Let's just make that nice and strong as far as the mum's concerned. Just get rid of that bit of hair behind. And there and there we go, pretty much. Uh, we're done. So we could look at this little baby over here on the right hand side. Is there another shot of the baby? If so, not there. Let's go back to that other series that we had. Is there another one with the, ba uh, the baby? Well, she is looking, okay? She's looking off to the side. What's she doing in our photograph? Well, look, the looking off to the side now the house is going to be a lot better than looking down towards him. So once more, let's just go back in there again and we'll bring this one up. Now, if you had more than one person who was kind of really beginning to, so you're going to have to really blend. I, I've got no option at all in basically dragging one onto the other, pressing the shift command as I drop it and just seeing now how kind of difference they are in the scaling. Yeah. So you can see, what did I just do? I should explain that fully. I do apologize. Right, I've got the other image. I oh, I opened it up. I just grab it now with the move tool and just uh, drop it now. As I drop it, press the shift key and it centralizes the whole image. Now just change the opacity. Then with the move tool, move that around to actually see for some registration going on. Going close now, I'm pretty much going to line up mum again. On the right now. Okay, so am I going to keep mum? I don't know yet. But we're pretty close to where we were. In fact, there we go. Right. So, in this case, I'm going to work in the reverse. I'm going to, as I press the um, uh, layer mask, I'm going to press uh, the Alt key, and that puts a black mask. Now I'm going to work in reverse, so B, D, and X. So instead of kind of copying uh, across from one image to another like we did in the first place, now I've kind of brought the whole image in. So now you can see if I use the brush, B, default, white on top, now I can start to really bring the baby up into the image. Now you can see already why it's kind of good to kind of steal more size at times. Worry about mum's bum in a minute there now. The last thing I want to wed up with is two baby's heads or three arms. Okay, so that's okay. We're pretty much there. So with a bigger brush, of course, it'll just make sure that we're copying everything. Now, the reason I didn't want to kind of fix backgrounds yet, or whatever it is, is because there's a very good chance that um, I'm going to have to kind of crop and fix backgrounds, like we'll kind of just finish off now with a minute. But remember, this film is really about kind of fixing it here. Let's go with a small brush now, left bracket, bringing it down, bringing it down, and just kind of finishing it off. And if we want want to see how thin this leg would be, if we do X, 
to put black on top we can start now to actually paint down the side so I definitely increased it the other side so I may as well basically kind of do it here and then we're pretty much done all right so what what we did is we fixed baby and mum's hip over on the right hand side yeah the shoulder has nat naturally got bigger as the baby's move is moved away so I haven't had to actually kind of uh, increase the shoulder size or fill a space between that was the benefit I fixed the kind of the the legs down here so it all kind of blends together well all around by his arm is pretty much uh, perfect in fact let's just go once more and just make sure I'm doing that here we go because I've got to think it could be for a third 30 20 so if this is the one I'm gonna kind of show off to the client on, on their view and I need to make sure it's perfect straight away with it and then of course remember we've got this little girl's face that we kind of stole from the other image as well and we changed all of mum's kind of uh, figure and pose and everything else with it and things really so one we copied across using the clone stamp tool from one to another for, first of all we went across to this image we selected between the gap here and then we pay we painted down and then the other one we kind of worked in reverse where we kind of grabbed this image and we dropped it on top of here to actually end up with the right kind of color uh, combination now the way I kind of finish this the f first of all is shift control s and we want to save this as a working file W it's a PSD it's a multi document layer at this point and that's just saving that fully a minute now I'm just going to press um, to uh, I usually press my F2 key but just layer flatten image discard the hidden it layer yes please because I've already kept those the PSD now what we're going to do is basically fix the whole thing so crop crop it now okay so the crop in tool let's do the straightening first and then we'll close in now I'm not going to kind of fix it all in one hit with the crop I could cheat and bring this across here and just kind of just get rid of his toe but I want to have compositional space I'm thinking all the time the client is going to buy big for the wall if they're going to buy big for the wall I need compositional space around the whole image no matter what so with that done that's pretty much it it's even on both sides then as far as the diff difference from the edge of the, ba the baby to the um, uh, the edge of the photograph is concerned double click that and pretty much we're done now now what am I going to do I'm going to make a duplicate of the uh, image first now I'm going to go control L I want to pick up the white picker click onto the white floor and this is where I just fixed it okay I fixed the white that's the key thing so I've got seamless white kind of going all over but as you can see what we've done compared to the other image we've built the contrast up now we have lost the detail of the kids so all we're gonna do now here is basically quickly um, I can either use the erase tool or a clone stamp tool or what I do I want to actually use the um, mask tool I want to go B D X okay brush default black on top and now what I'm going to do is with a big brush I kind of go straight in and I kind of bring the detail in back so I don't need to get down the floor the floor is really uh, really the part that I just fixed okay pretty much done right so now I can go shift connect control all E that means make a new layer based on all visible layers which I just did I'm going to go in now and choose a color so I want to choose uh, the white here now it doesn't matter which one you choose whether it's the four uh, the foreground or the background depends on whether you can use your alt key or not to actually have a fill layer and all we're going to do is actually fill it with the white I hit the alt, alt key to use the background color yeah I'll drag it below now all I'm going to do again is what remember, uh, remember the mask uh, B for brush it's already there D for default uh, and then X to actually put black on top now all I need to do is just shrink my brush down a little bit brush down a lot more
and if it didn't work on a hundred percent uh, kind of paint then we need to actually go over it several times and then pretty much we've done there so what we just did is swap this little girl's face here for the best we could we swapped this baby uh, the baby for the best we could including thinning down of mum's legs and hips we corrected the actual background itself really and you know at real speed probably that's going to take you two to three minutes tops uh, for the actual kind of fix and things really so it's just uh, working in the best system that you have and then from here i can flatten this now shift control alt s I can ch turn this into a JPEG file now and change it from a W into an F, which means finished. Press save. And I'm done. So um, again, rem remember what we're trying to do is, is kind of uh, uh, fix the whole image. If all I had to do was fix the background, remember the system that we just did, would be to first of all crop to get rid of um, anything we didn't want but keep the compositional space there double click in it then we want to control J to duplicate it we want to then go into control L to set the new white then we want to actually have a, uh, a, a mask B D S uh, X paint back the people paint back any detail lost because of the increased contrast and clean white that we've just created as such once we've done uh, we've done that shift control alt e to make a new layer um, from all visible layers creating a new uh, fill fill layer go and choose the background white that you want Fill, fill that with the color, drag it in behind, once more the top layer, pick on a mask and all, all we've got to do now is go in and actually get rid of the actual black flat. At the same point of course once we kind of near, uh, near enough finish we can go down there and actually correct some of the little kind of shadow wave areas that perhaps didn't get cleaned up when we did it and things really and that's how we would fix fix it. Hope you've enjoyed this film. See you on the next one.